Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Today we're going to talk about the truth of prophecy with the Prophet Muhammad before Islam and the evidences of his prophecy. The Prophet was born in the year of the elephant on Monday and this is proven and confirmed. And it was said he was born also in Rabi' al-Awwal according to the opinion of the most. The Jewish rabbis, the Christian monks, and the Arab priests all had taught about the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, before he was a prophet. They knew about him, they had knowledge about him in their books, whether it was the Bible before it has been changed, or in the Torah before it was changed. They all knew about that. Even Arabs, they took this information from the people before them. So the rabbis from the Jewish and the monks from the Christians, they found him in their book. And this is confirmed by Quran. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَمُبَشِّرًا بِرَسُولٍ يَأْتِ مِنْ بَعْدِ اسْمُهُ أَحْمَدِ It means that Isa alayhi salam said this ayah, means he is going to preach with a prophet that's going to success him. His name is Ahmed, and Ahmed is the name of the prophet Muhammad. One of his names and it was written in the books of the bible and the Torah, the book of moses peace be upon all those messengers what confirms that the hadith of hassan ibn thabit radiallahu anhu when he said wallahi inni laghulamun yafa ibn sab'a sinin aw thamani aqilu ma asma is sami'tu yahudiyan يصرخ بأعلى صوته على أطمة في يثرب يقول يا معشر يهود حتى إذا اجتمعوا إليه قالوا ويلك مالك he said لقد طلع الليلة نجم أحمد الذي ولد به what does that mean a Jewish man in the days of Hassan ibn Thabit when he was young almost seven or eight years and Hassan ibn Thabit one of the most uh, famous sahaba and he was young at the time of the prophecy of the Prophet Muhammad, he said, I was seven or eight years, but I used to understand everything I used to hear. So he saw one day a Jewish man screaming at the top of his lungs saying, all oh, Jewish people come here. They gathered and said, hey, what's going on? He said, the star of Ahmed has risen already tonight. It means he, it was mentioned in his Torah, okay, the book of Moses, they knew that before, that it's one of the signs that the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, had already been given prophecy from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he has become prophet. Also another hadith confirms that what was narrated by Ahmed and Hakim and At-Tabarani and others from Salamat ibn Salamat ibn Waqsh, may Allah be pleased with him. And he was one of the companions of the people of Badr, the first fight between Mushrikeen and Mu'mineen. He said, كان لنا رجلا من يهود من بني عبد الأشهل فخرج علينا ذات يوم من بيته قبل مبعث الرسول محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم بقليل وقف على مجلس بني عبد الأشهل وأنا أحدث الناس يومئذ سنا علي بردة مشتملا بها متجعا بفناء أهلي فذكر البعث والقيامة والميزان والجنة والنار ذكر ذلك في أهل شرك وأوثان لا يظنون بعثا قائما بعد الموت وقالوا ويحك يا فلان أتظن هذا قائما أن الناس يبعثون من قبورهم إلى دار فيها جنة ونار فيجزون بأعمالهم قال نعم والذي يحلف به لود الرجل أن له بحظه من تلك النار أعظم تنور في الدنيا يحمونه ويطبقونه عليه فيلقى به وأن ينجو من عذاب تلك النار قالوا وما آية ذلك قال نبي يبعث من نحو هذه القرية وأشار إلى مكة قالوا أما تراه كائنا فنظر إلى القوم وأنا أحدث القوم سنا فقال إن يستنفذ هذا الغلام عمره يدركه قال سلمة والله ما ذهب الليل والنهار حتى بعث الله رسوله صلى الله عليه وسلم وهو حي بين أظهرنا ذلك اليهودي فآمنا به وكذب به فقلنا له ويحك يا فلان ألست الذي قلت كذا وكذا لنا قال نعم ولكن ليس به What does that all mean? 
Salamat ibn Salamat ibn Waqt was a young uh, kid at the time. And then he heard one Jewish man he stood up and gathered people and started to, to talk about the fire and the heaven and the hereafter and the resurrection, the day of the judgment and stuff like that. He's saying this for people that don't believe in anything and they worship idols and they don't ever think that anyone would be resurrected after he dies. So they were very surprised and they said, do you really think that people may be resurrected after they die? He said, yes, indeed. They asked him, so do you think that after we die and then we are resurrected, we're going to be punished by our deeds in the life? So we go to Jannah or go to Na, we go to fire or go to heaven? He said, yes, and any person who does very bad things and then he would be thrown to the hell, he would beg to find the greatest furnace in life ever to be heated till the most. Then he goes inside this furnace and then this furnace is surrounding him and covering on him to be tortured in this and not to be tortured in the fire of the hereafter that Allah had prepared for Kafirin. He just would like to be freed from that fire. He's talking this out of the severe torture. People asked him, so what is the sign of that? How could we know that? He said that this man is going to come from Mecca and he pointed to it. He said, when is this gonna happen? The Jewish man said, when he looked at me, this is Salama's talking. When he looked at me, I was young, he says, when this boy, grows up, you will see him. Then Salama says something very, very interesting and surprising. He said that it wasn't so long until the Prophet ﷺ has become a prophet and this man, the Jewish man, who had been telling us this was alive. So we all believed in the Prophet and this man denied and disbelieved in the Prophet. We told him, hey, wasn't you the man who was trying to convince us and trying to advise us to go and believe with this man? He says, yes, it's me, but I wouldn't believe in him. So Salama says, they denied him because they're envious. That's it. Jewish people are always like that. Also another evidence that there are some people of Al-Ansar. The Ansar are the people of Al-Medina who had supported the Prophet Muhammad when he immigrated from Mecca to Al-Medina. He says that one of the reasons that had encouraged us to be Muslims and guided us after Allah guidance is what we used to hear from the Jewish people when we were young and before Islam because they had knowledge of the books of Allah because they were the people of the Torah and Injil, the Bible and the book of Musa salam. So we used to have some fights between us and them. So sometimes we win them. So when they get angry because they beat them, they used to say there will be a day that a prophet is going to be sent down so we're going to follow this prophet and then the prophet and us are going to attack you and kill you like Ad and Aram had been killed before they're trying to threaten the Ansar people by this prophet who's going to come and they're going to follow interestingly when the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam had been sent from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala people believed in him but those Jewish people did not believe in him although they were the people who had told the Arabs about the prophecy and about the news that they're going to be a prophet. But as usual, Jewish people are very envious of the prophet and with Arabs. That's why they did not believe in the prophet, although they know he is the right one. And he says, in those people, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala descended this ayah from Surah Al-Baqarah, chapter 2, in Quran. وَلَمَّا جَاءَهُمْ كِتَابٌ مِّنْ عِنْدِ اللَّهِ مصدقا لما معهم وكانوا من قبل يستفتحون على الذين كفروا فلما جاءهم ما عرفوا كفروا به فلعنة الله على الكافرين This ayah talking about those Jewish people when they had been given a book from Allah Allah means here the Torah, the book of Moses This book believes and admits and confirms what Allah says that there will going to be a prophet after this to breach of the Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him and they knew it inside the book and those people, the same people they used to يستفتحون على الذين كفروا they used to tell the people who were disbelievers who weren't Ahl al-Kitab they used to tell them there will be a Prophet so when that Prophet came 
and their prophecy had been fulfilled, and what they were telling people had become true, kafarubi. They disbelieved in it. So Allah warned them, فَلَعْنَةُ عَلَى الْكَافِرِينَ Lana means to be dismissed of Allah's mercy. Also, one of the other proofs was what Zayd ibn Amr ibn Nufayl before Islam. He says, one day when I used to go in trading between the Levant and Mecca, one of the priests told me once before, a prophet has been sent in your nation, in your people. He knew it because it had been mentioned in his book. And he told the same prophecy as before. He completed saying, his star, the prophet's star, has already been risen, as it was mentioned in the Torah. So he advised Amr ibn Fayl and says, go back to your home and follow this prophet. Finally, the last proof we have today is a part of hadith that happened between Abu Sufyan and Herakl before Abu Sufyan becomes Muslim at the time he was kafir. It was a very long speech between both of them. From this speech, Herakl, the king of the Roman people at the time, and it was narrated in Sahih al-Bukhari, that Herakl had asked Abu Sufyan many, many questions. And then at the end of those questions, Herakl says, I knew that he was going to be sent, but I didn't think he's going to be sent in your people, Arabs, I mean. And then said to Abu Sufyan, and if what you said has been true, because Abu Sufyan has told him many, many things, it is not the time now to mention that, answering Herakl's questions. He says, if what you said is true, so this prophet is going to dominate under my feet here. It means he's going to spread all over the world. And if I knew that I would be able to go to him, I would be eager to go to him and meet him happily. And if I were there when he emerge and becomes a prophet, I would go under his legs and clean his feet out of respect and obedience. That wasn't a Muslim man at the time. Even Abu Sufyan wasn't a Muslim people and they all testified to the prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that he's going to be the prophet because their books showed that. That's even before any Muslim says any word about the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Until I see you another time, take care of yourselves. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.